31, welcome to example five. We're gonna look at an application of exponential growth or potentially exponential decay. You can see that there's uh, an exponential term in here. We've got Newton's law of cooling. And what this equation is about to unpack is how, how certain objects cool or heat to room temperature. So you can imagine if you get up in the morning and you have your cup of coffee and it's nice and steamy and, and piping hot, if you leave that coffee sitting in your, your, your room, your office, in school, you can imagine that that coffee is gonna get cooler and cooler and cooler, and it's eventually gonna have the same temperature as the room. So it'll acclimate to the room temperature. And this is the equation that governs that, that decrease in temperature, or at least the decrease in temperature for the coffee. All right, so the temperature of an object T in surrounding air temperature T sub S will behave according to the formula, and here it is. So capital T evaluated at little t is equal to AE to the KT plus T sub S. And I know that sounds like a lot, but let's see what all of these letters represent. So little t is time. A, it's the difference between your initial temperature of your object and its surroundings. And K is a constant, the continuous rate of cooling of the object. Right, so you see continuous here, which is why we have an E. All right, but little t is time, capital T is temperature. So I can tell you the temperature of your object at any time according to this formula. And in terms of constants, there's a bunch of them. T sub S is a constant, K is a constant, and A is a constant. And so is E for that matter, right? E, base E, it's just a number, 2.71828. So really your only variables here are little t, and capital T, so time and temperature. All right, so with that, let's read through this problem and see what we can pick apart. So it says a pitcher of water at 40 degrees Fahrenheit is placed into a 70 degree room. One hour later, the temperature has risen to 45 degrees. How long will it take for the temperature to rise to 60 degrees? All right, so this is a different type of example than the one I had kind of laid out before. I had that our coffee was going to acclimate to room temperature, but it was gonna to decrease to the room temperature. This is where you have a pitcher of water, and imagine you come into a room, right? It's got ice in it and the water, and, and the room temperature is obviously hotter than the, the pitcher of water, so that pitcher of water, all that ice is gonna to start to melt, the temperature of the water is gonna acclimate to room temperature. So in this version, the temperature is increasing, where in the coffee one, the temperature was decreasing. Still, both of them are governed by Newton's law of cooling. All right, so let's see if we can start to pick apart these numbers. So I, I hear initially that the water, the pitcher of water is 40 degrees. So I'm just gonna put some squiggles, uh, some information that we can glean off to the side here. So I see that my initial temperature is 40 degrees Fahrenheit, all right? And let me go put, I'll put an equal sign there. I don't need a colon. All right. All right. I also see that the surrounding temperature, right, the room temperature is 70 degrees, and T sub S is just that. T sub S is the temperature of the surrounding air, so I know that T sub S is equal to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, I'll keep that in mind, but as soon as you know your initial temperature of your object, in this case, the pitcher of water, and you know the surrounding temperatures, you can find A. So A is the difference between your initial temp and the surrounding. So because of these two, I know A has to equal, and go in this order, 40 minus 70, so A is negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. And then they also give me an ordered pair here. They say one hour later, the temperature has risen to 45 degrees, right? I see little t, capital T. So I'm just gonna take note that I have the ordered pair one comma 45. Oops, you can't see what I'm doing. Let me scooch this up. So we'll keep the equation in view. And now you can see all my little scribble work here. All right, so my initial temperature was 40, surrounding was 70, so my A value, the difference between those two, in this order, initial minus surrounding, negative 30. I also hear an ordered pair that they gave me, little t, right, my time was one hour, capital T, temperature was 45 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so let's see what we can start doing with my Newton's Law of Cooling. 
And I just want to take a quick moment to mention that when you start to look at the um, some of the Khan Academy examples and then other videos that I've linked, not everybody uses A, K, and T sub S, but they have the same meaning, whether they're called A, whether they're called K or T sub S, but people have different symbols for those. This is just the one that your book used. All right, so taking a look, I know my A value is negative 30. I knew T sub S was 70. All right. So that just leaves me wanting to find my K value, but I have an ordered pair to help me do that. So let's plug in 45. And we're gonna start to, ooh, wow, that is not in view. Hold up, hold up, we can do this. All right, so we're gonna plug in 45 and one. 45 for my capital T value, one for little t. And now I'm gonna go ahead and solve for k. Now k is up in an exponent of this power, so I need to isolate this term. And once I isolate that term, then I can log both sides. But if I wanna isolate this, I'm gonna write this term on the left side. So I have negative 30 um, e to the k is going to need to be equal to, all right, 45 minus 70 is negative 25. So I know e to the k will be equal to negative 25 over negative 30. Which will ultimately be negative 5 sixths. All right, oops, no, I can, I can do math better than that. A negative divided by a negative is definitely a positive. All right, so we've got that. All right, I'm gonna take the natural log of both sides And it's a good thing this ratio is positive because you can't have a negative argument. So this, this had to be positive in order to work. Um, these are gonna cancel and k, it'll be some kind of negative number. Whenever you take the log, whenever your argument's a fraction, you're dealing with negative exponents. So we've got k equaling, all right, let's see what the natural log of 5 sixths is equal to. Let me get my calculator. So we'll go ln of 5 sixths and it is about negative 0.182. All right. All right, so with all of that, at this point, what I know, I'm gonna scooch this up even more just so we can write our final model here. So what this is telling me is that my Newton's law of cooling equation is officially negative 30 e to the negative 0.182t plus 70, right? That is it in all of its glory. There's the equation that is governing me through this, this water pitcher problem. Okay, but the question actually says, how long will it take for the temperature to rise to 60 degrees? All right, so let's think 60 degrees. Is that a little t or is that a big T? And that's a temperature value. So I'm gonna plug that in for a big T. So let's go ahead and plug that in for capital T and see where that leaves us. So I'll scooch right over here. I'll try and get this in. So we have 60 is going to be equal to negative 30 e to the negative 0.182t plus 70. All right, I wanna solve for little t. Fantastic, I, I gotta get that exponential term isolated. So the first thing I'm gonna do is subtract the 70 to the other side. So I've got negative 30 e to the negative 0.182t equaling, all right, 60 minus 70 is negative 10. I'm gonna divide both sides by negative 30, so I will get negative, excuse me, e to the negative 0.182t. All right, negative 10 divided by negative 30 is positive one third. I'm gonna take the natural log of both sides. When I take the natural log of both sides, These are gonna cancel. And so let me just start to move this in over here. I'll try and write kind of small so I don't run out of room. I've got negative 0.182t equaling the natural log of one third. I'm almost done. The last thing I need to do is divide both sides by negative 0.182t. Oops, not by 0.182t, excuse me, just by 0.182 or negative 0.182. All right, so t will be equal to whatever this number is. I'm definitely gonna do this on my calculator. 
So we've got the natural log, actually, yeah, so I've got the natural log of one third, and I'm gonna float this decimal, I'm gonna divide it by the natural log of that answer. And, and again, if you don't remember what answer is, if you look at your negative symbol, it's in blue above your negative symbol, so you would need to hit the second key. When I divide that out, oops, why am I getting a, there must be something off. Oh, I'm sorry, I know what I did. Maybe you're seeing it. It's not the natural log of my answer, it's just my answer. I apologize. Here we go. And the reason I was getting an error is because your calculator is like, hey, you can't take the natural log of a negative number. So as I hit enter, I'm looking at about 6.026 hours. So I would say that for my answer, T is about 6.026 and the time for this, was it hours? Wow, yeah, hours. So you can leave that pitcher of water in that room for about six hours and then it'll finally be kind of warm water, right? 70 degree water. Or excuse me, this was 60 degree water, 60 degree, right? Yeah, we set it equal to 60. All right, now if you wanted to check your answer on your calculator, you can go into your y equals and do this. We can enter in Newton's law of cooling for this problem. It was negative 30 e to the negative 0.182 t plus 70. I can set that equal to 60. And since we're just doing a regular math problem, I would start with saying, well, hit zoom six. But this window is so not gonna be what you want it to be. All right, because I, there's no, I can't even see 60. I know I actually started up at 70. So let me adjust my Y values. Let me at least, <coughs> excuse me, I'll go zero to 100 and I'll go by tens. All right, and let's see what that graph is looking like now. All right, so I can see that exponential function because again, my water was cold and it's heating up and I can see it intersect. And if you wanna keep it on this view, you can. I like to think like, I don't really need negative T values. So I'm just gonna cap this at like negative one just so I, I don't see as much of the X axis. And again, you don't have to do all of this. This is just how I hunt around for a nice looking window. All right, that intersection, if I count it, one, two, three, four, five, six. It looks pretty close to six, just visually, and that's good because my answer was pretty close to six. But I'm gonna hit second trace, five, and then it's just enter, 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 because your calculator's asking, do you want one of the curves to be the Newton's Law of Cooling function? Yes. Do I want one of them to be 60? Yes. Now you can type in a guess, or you can just hit enter. I'm just gonna hit enter, and there it is. Oh, that says 6.036. I thought I got 6.026. Um, and it's fine if there's a little bit of a round off error because again, your calculator is more precise in that it's floating all of the decimals where I did round off. So you can see there's just a slight difference, right? 6.036, I got 6.026. So I'm off by about one one hundredth of an hour. That's not too terrible. I, I'd take all, all both of those answers. I just want you to see that slight discrepancy between the calculator answer, or I should say the graphing calculator parts answer, and then our answer by hand. All right, so with that, we're gonna look at another application of exponential growth, something called logistic growth, and then we'll be done with this section. All right, I'll see you in a bit, bye.